So let's talk about making the web a little bit more app-like. And I think the first question to ask is, what exactly is different about the web uh, from apps? And for starters, apps are installed. And users know that the word install means that it's meant for their device. They wouldn't encounter an install button like this one somewhere where the thing that they're looking at isn't actually designed and meant for the device that they're on. So my goal is to enable web developers to have everything they need in order to do this. There will always be trade-offs to consider when you're thinking about what web stack, or sorry, what stack that you want to use to build a project. So my goal is that when developers are choosing to build with the web stack, that you can accomplish any goal that you could with any other technology, including the integration into the device. And this is what you see right here on the right. It's an example of an app that launches from the home screen and is indistinguishable from a native app. Bookmarks in the past were the universal install button, and they've been available on every major device since the dawn of the web. So it's a good question to ask, what, what do we actually get out of install? What, what's better about it than, than just adding a bookmark? And the main reason that we need something that's more than bookmarks is that we need to integrate into the OS in ways that are pretty important to the functionality that we're offering. So for example, a lot of apps use Android's native share sheet. So this is what you see here on the right side where a URL is shared from Mintra into the Twitter app. Well, in order to enable that share target, we need to integrate into the operating system in a way that's a first class operating system level entity. And this is something that you can do with an APK on Android and it, it's more than what you get from a bookmark. A lot of you might be familiar with this word, add to home screen, which is what you're seeing there on the right uh, in the Starbucks screenshot. Unfortunately, add to home screen has actually come to mean two different things, and they're used synonymously in Chrome right now. So add to home screen could actually mean a bookmark, or it could mean that you're installing and integrating into the operating system. So, in this talk, I'm going to be using the word install to talk about these integrated experiences and to differentiate them from bookmarks. And in the future, we're going to be making this change to the UI so that whenever we refer to install, that means that something's actually getting integrated into the OS as a first class citizen of the operating system. So let's talk about more, a little bit more about install as a user experience affordance. So install is an affordance that's familiar to mobile users who are used to adding content from OS stores that includes places like Play, uh, and finding that content again in a device launching surface. So this is things like the home screen, for example. Install is aligning to a user's mental model of how apps are supposed to work. And an installed web app, ideally, should look and behave like any other app that the user is using. They shouldn't really have to care whether or not the developer chose to use the web to build that particular app. It should just work the way they expect it to. Most importantly, coming back to what I'd said earlier, install is that signal to the user that this is an experience that should be great on their device. Here is a summary of all of the ways that install is different from bookmarks. So install should be integrating into native launch surfaces. It should be integrating into the native task switcher. So in some cases, um, the task switcher can be uh, a more natural affordance for users in, in uh, you know, changing screens than, for example, tabs in the browser. And installed web apps are usually standalone, and those are actually fully separated from the browser and offering uh, access to that, that task switcher and that launch from native surfaces. We already talked about the integration into native settings and permissions. With an installed app, you are telling a user that this experience it should be like any other experience that they're getting on that device. And that's a pretty hard, high bar to jump in terms of what it means for design of your, web, uh, of your web app. So fortunately, there's a pattern for building experiences that do exactly this. Progressive web apps are a pattern for building great apps that are using web technology. They have all of the features and the functionality that users are expecting from a modern application, and that includes things like personalized content, an offline mode, push notifications, and instant loading. PWAs and installed web apps go hand in hand. You basically need a PWA in order to unlock and install.
Now, there are other types of projects that are trying to crack this problem of how do we get, uh, how do we use the web stack to build installed native apps? So you can take a look at things like React Native, Electron, and Cordova. These are all ways that you can build native app using web technologies. But these experiences all also depend on functionality that won't work in the browser. PWAs are built directly on the web. And that means you can have exactly one code base for your visitors that are arriving in the browser and your users that have installed and are launching from the home screen. I'd prefer to have two or more code bases to maintain doing exactly the same thing with unique bugs and different development skills that a hire for said basically no business ever. The device landscape for this is not getting any easier. And so if you are you know, choosing a non-web route, um, you generally are going to have to choose a lot more even than, than two different uh, code bases. You might have three or you might have four. There's more screens. There's more configurations than ever before. You're going between you know, screens that are two inches big to 200 inches big. But fortunately, the web is really awesome at doing fluid layouts. In this example, the Santa Tracker, which was built by Chrome's awesome DevRel team, works on basically everything with a browser, even this kind of magical screen, which keeps changing layouts and orientation. We find that users who have installed it to their home screen on any one of these platforms are the most engaged, and they come back the most often. So on Android alone, we found that more than 10% uh, of loads were coming from the installed icon. This is fundamentally because when an app is installed, users feel like that experience was designed for them. They'll have better engagement, more loyalty, and a more positive experience. It's quite reasonable to try to understand what is this segment, what are the, the characteristics of the audience of the, who will benefit from actually installing your experience. First, I think it's really important to understand that it's natural that this is not everyone. Not everyone who visits your website is going to convert into an installed user, and that's fine. Part of the power of the web is that it is ephemeral. That's what makes it such an amazing discovery surface. It's great. It's, you get all this you know, organic traffic that comes as a result of SEO. And part of the design of the web is that users can move quickly between experiences. And let's say that it's an experience that they only need once, or they only need once a year. The browser is probably how they're going to want to consume that. And there's probably nothing that you can do that will capture that user to install. But there's also such a thing as an install funnel. And this is similar to native app install or e-commerce conversion funnels, where you want to essentially build a relationship with that user. And most funnel optimization strategies can apply here, too. You don't want to push the user to convert to an installed user when they don't really know what the value they're going to get from your services yet. So you should focus on promoting installed users who are frequent users and beneficiaries of your services. Focus on the features that the users are going to care about, as well as the key characteristics of the web installed experience that would differentiate it. Things like small download size, or easier access for the user, or access to key features such as web share. You're going to want to track the right events in your analytics so that you know how to optimize this funnel. And I'm going to cover this in a bit more detail later in the talk. Make sure that you promote web install on screens where the use case is actually going to make sense. So take, uh, for example, this example from Spotify, where the call to action is on a landing page. We're going to be covering more examples of this as we go through the talk. We've covered a bit of the what and some of the why. And I'm going to continue more with the how of install. The basic requirements for supporting an installable, on the installable web are to have a web app manifest and a service worker. These are well documented and uh, are the same requirements to be classified as a progressive web app, and that's no coincidence. In this talk, I'm going to be mostly covering the manifest. For the service worker, the requirement is that for install is that the experience works offline, so that if the user opens the app from the home screen, for example, they're going to have some kind of experience that's sitting there waiting. And it, you, at a minimum, even if you, there's no functionality that you can offer the user um, that uh, it, when they're not connected to the internet, at least you could show them a branded screen indicating that they're offline and that they need to connect. 
there's a lot of great content out there uh, for how to build your service worker. So what I suggest is if you need to learn more, you might want to check out Workbox, which makes service worker a lot easier. Just go out and do a search on that. The, let's focus on the manifest file for a second here. The manifest file is a simple JSON which informs your site how to act when the user installs it. And you need one of these for each of your apps, and you need to include a link to it from every page of your site so that the user can tap install from anywhere. So if you, you don't just put this on your home page. If you don't have uh, the, the appropriate link tag in every page of your experience, then uh, those pages will not be, in, you know, they will not install your app if the user wants to install. Pretty much all browsers have some level of support for this. And this right here, the link rel manifest line, is how you specify the pointer to your manifest. One of the fundamentals of a PWA is controlling what your launcher icon is actually going to look like and what start page it's going to open when the user taps on it. So you're not, um, you're not forced to use just the root of your web app. You can point uh, to any custom page that you want. So it could be the case that um, you know, where the browser would land if they just typed in your domain name and their URL bar, you might want that to be different than the first page of your web app. And you can do that by specifying the start page in your manifest. Here's uh, an example of the Santa tracker. It has a little green icon and a short name, Santa. And you're going to expect to see something similar when this is installed as an app on desktop, for example. The manifest is controlling how the app is loaded. So for games, you probably want to specify that you want it full screen. Uh, so that's, for example, the example on the right. Um, for anything app-like, standalone mode is probably the right mode that you're looking for. Websites can running in any mode can still use the browser APIs to request full screen at a later point. So let's take, for example, um, you, know, you, you don't want to start full screen, but at some moment in your experience, it makes sense to open up. Like, for example, you have a mini game in there, and you want to go full screen once the mini game starts. You can always request it later on. The manifest file itself is pretty straightforward. Here it is for completeness. It's small and extensible. I'm not going to go into every one of these fields in the talk. There's lots of information about this out on the web. But I do want to cover a few important patterns here. You need to include a few icons in the manifest. And at this point, with the increasing DPI of phone screens, we recommend that one of those icons be at least 512 by 512. Remember, this is different than your site's fav icon. You still need that. There's no internationalization built into the manifest file. So you want to specify a different manifest for every, for every language that you're going to support. PWA standard now allows for maskable icons. And the really short version of this is, if you provide an icon and indicate that it's maskable, this lets the operating system know that it can close off parts of the icon. And then it can display you know, all kinds of different interesting icon shapes, things like circles, squircicles, teardrops. And this is going to make your users feel like that app was actually made for their device. With maskable icons, I actually recommend that you uh, don't use transparency in the icon at all, because this is what the operating system is going to do. Um, a lot of this is quite new. So when you do use maskable icons, you might want to whip out a few different test devices and just make sure that it's masking the way that you would expect across different OS versions. And of course, uh, you know, reach out to us, file a bug if you notice any problems. There's a few things. Uh, more things that are coming up with the manifest that are worth mentioning here. One of those is that um, app shortcuts have been added to the spec. And this lets uh, installed apps basically offer secondary intents. So you can long press on the icon, for example. Native Android apps have had this for a little while. And the example here is actually showing a secondary intent for the Chrome native app. So this is coming soon. Manifests are now supported by all modern browsers. And that leads us to getting into some of the details, which are pretty much always a web developer's best friend. Let's start with Android. So this is the first place that install was actually ever made available. And once installed, apps are first class citizens of the Android environment. And they're pr being provided by real native APKs. Chrome on Android is actually able to prompt users to install if your site has both a service worker and a manifest and passes an engagement threshold. 
The Santa Tracker here is pretty ambitious. If you're looking at this animation here, you'll notice that the Add Santa to Home Screen mini info bar pops up even while the application is still loading. And this is not very ideal. So I'm going to get a little bit later in the talk to how we change this behavior. Once you, for example, tap the mini info bar, you're going to get an ins uh, a full screen prompt to install. And there's a few things to dissect here. First, as I mentioned, that add to home screen, we're moving away from that verbiage. We're moving towards install. Um, so there can be ways that you could trigger this such that it would only be a bookmark. We want to differentiate that case. So if this is going to be integrated into the user's device, these words are going to change. Uh, over the next couple of months, you'll see them switch to using the word install. As I mentioned, this does generate a real APK that works with any launcher. So it's now integrated into the operating system as uh, some kind of container that's appropriate to the OS that it's been installed in. Another option for install on Android is something called a trusted web activity or a TWA. I know that the acronym PWA and TWA are close together. It's unfortunate, but they're actually quite different things. A TWA is fundamentally an Android application which features a core activity that's being powered by Chrome. And soon, we expect that both Firefox and Samsung Internet will also provide support for trusted web activities if the user's preferred browser isn't Chrome. Once you've created an app using a trusted web activity, which opens your pro progressive web app, um, you could upload that to the Play Store. So then at that point, it's basically promotable, discoverable, in play, just like any other native app. The best way to learn how to implement a TWA is to look for Google's code lab on this. Um, so just do a search for TWA code lab, and you'll find more information. There's also, for enterprises, a really interesting option around using managed play with G Suite. So that means if your organization signs in to Gmail on their devices, you can push a real uh, APK that's going to load. Uh-oh. got a. We do have some, who knows, video problems. Oh, well. I will post these to my Twitter feed afterwards, and you can check them out. There's quite a few steps in the video, just to warn you. But if you watch closely, um, essentially this, what, we've, what we've built is the ability to push uh, apps out into your, into your enterprise environments, just as if they were native apps. From the perspective of the user who are getting these apps, they're not different from any other native app that you might push out through managed play. So let's talk for a moment about iOS. iOS has had installable web apps for some time, but in the last few releases, they have made uh, access to these a lot more practical. So again, I'll, I'll push this example out a little bit later after this talk. But um, I think the important thing that, to note here is that you do still need to specify this Apple Touch icon. This is one key difference between iOS it doesn't respect the icons that you, pre that you specify in the manifest. So there is a separate meta tag that you need to include when you're creating a PWA that you expect to need to work on iOS. So last but not least, I want to talk about desktop. Only Chrome provides install on desktop right now, but I do expect that we'll see support for this from other browsers soon. And I've already seen some exciting moves in uh, this direction with um, you know, some brands deciding to uh, deprecate out-of-date uh, Windows native apps, for example, with a desktop PWA. And they're working great across all platforms from Chrome, uh, Mac OS, Windows, Linux, Chrome OS. Sites will get this little plus button up there in the top right corner. And users, once they've engaged with that, get a native app that lives in the launcher that's appropriate to the operating system that it's installed in. The plus button even gives you a little bit of a wiggle if you've done the right thing and call attention for the user to the fact that install is available. I'm going to cover some of the frequently missed details that will help acquire some uh, that will help you acquire installed app users. So a lot of companies that I've spoken with have expressed concern that they don't want to promote a web install to their users who might already have a native app that they've created. So you do want to promote your PWA, but you don't want to have any channel conflict with your native app users. Now keep in mind that there's actually all kinds of reasons why a user might have either not decided not to get your native app, or they might have uninstalled your native app, but they might still want your, they, still, they might still want your web app. 
So storage is the number one reason that users remove apps from their device. Um, most web apps are under a megabyte. So these are very tiny by way of comparison. And that, that does two things. It both increases the chance that the user is going to want to install your native app, and it decreases the chance that, um, it decreases the, chance that the user will remove your app once, they've had a, you know, once they, they're going through and they're cleaning up their device and trying to free up more space. Most PWA installs today are happening from the mini info bar, and that mini info bar was really only intended to be a temporary shim. So a little bit later in this talk, I'm going to be showing you some of the alternatives to the mini info bar pattern. Let's talk a little bit about some of the details about how we can make that mini info bar disappear, though. This is the line that just went bold right there, event.preventDefault. When you're monitoring for the before install prompt event, which is what tells you that the web app is ready to be installed to the device. Calling that prevent default will prevent that mini info bar from appearing. Just keep in mind that if you haven't implemented any other pattern for the user to understand that install is available when you do this, you will literally get zero installs after you call prevent default here. So make sure that you have provided an alternative way, say in your web UI, for the user to install. So let's assume that you have a UI element that's called install button that you're going to display when the user says that install is available. And this element should be hidden from the user uh, until such time as install is ready. So there you see this install button dot hidden equals false. We're making that install element visible. And finally, you're capturing a reference to the install event so that when the user does actually click on that install button, you can call the prompt on that element. And that's exactly what I'm showing here. That's how you can use that saved reference. So let's imagine that you want to wait until the user's completed a key part of the journey before you are even presenting the install UI. That's when you're able to use the saved reference and let the user call the prompt method on here. You want to make sure that you have instrumented your analytics. These are the three things that you need to worry about before install prompt. This is when the site has qualified for install. The click event, this will be on some part of your UI. I can't tell you what it's going to be, because only you know what the elements are. But you probably want to attach a click handler on there and add that to your analytics. And finally, there's an app installed event that gets fired when the user has successfully installed the app from the browser. You might be asking yourself about iOS. And the great news is that iOS Safari has had support for the essential PWA ingredient service worker for quite a while now. And it's easier than ever to install PWAs on iOS Safari. So this is an example of a promotion that we created for the Santa Tracker app, which, where the button is actually going to be exactly the same between Android and iOS. Um, the only difference is that on iOS, we're going to pop this up in the web UI to help explain to the user how to use that Add to Home Screen option. I'm just going to cover some of the UX patterns that you should consider to make sure that your PWA feels a little bit more like a native app. There's an expected expectation that installed apps do look and feel like they're integrated into the device. And you get that feeling when you use uh, great web apps like Spotify or, say, Google Docs. And when you use those apps, you might even forget that they're actually running on the web. So here's how you can help your users have that level of immersion. First, the focus rings. These are letting your users know where their cursor is. And you should always provide these. It's pretty important for accessibility. That being said, you might want to change these up because the default ring is definitely one of the tells of a web, of a web app. So mix it up. And this applies to form elements as well as links. Text selection is also something that you're going to want to do a little bit differently. You want to disable it on UI components. It's a bit weird to have parts of the UI selected when the user, for example, does select all. Personally, I'm not a fan of making UI elements selectable at all, um, but it's especially pronounced after the user has installed a web app. You, you definitely don't want this happening. You should set a theme color, and that refers to the window color of your app. Um, so for example, you can see that we've got a title bar here that's dark blue. By default, it's being set by the platform, so you want to make sure that it matches your app. Also, be careful about overscroll, which is also what you're seeing demoed here. Um, you probably just want to disable overscroll altogether, because this is a very web-like pattern. I also want to briefly mention the safe area inset, because this is going to help you out if you need to integrate notches into your designs. 
So here's a few more things you want to think about with respect to the UX. First, don't allow navigation outside of your own site from an installed app. If you do, users are going to be surprised with a, with a URL bar. You probably, if you want the user to, to go to an experience that's on a separate website, you actually probably want to specify that that should open in a new window, and then it'll open up in the web browser. Next, think about better behavior for extended actions like select all, undo, redo. So this is going to work out of the box for things like uh, the contents of a form element. But what, what if, for example, you have the ability to reorder cards in your web interface? You want the user to be able to undo that. So make sure that the undo button works the way the user would expect. And finally, uh, you may want to do something different with the right-click menu on desktop. People expect these contextually these context menus to do something that's specific to the app, not provide a set of generic web page options. I mentioned promoting your web app a few times now. So we're going to go through uh, quite quickly just some examples of how you can promote your web app to the users, some patterns that we've seen uh, that are successful. I've had some of our partners come up to me and say that these have been their su most successful app campaigns. So first, the header can be a great place to promote install of your web app. You want to use information architecture techniques here to make sure that it's actually relevant to the, the users, that this is the most important thing you could be putting here, because this is pretty vital pixels in your experience. So just be careful with this one. But it, it can be a very powerful experience. Another great pattern we see is the use of the hamburger menu. And the great thing about putting a promotional pattern in the hamburger menu is that the user is already engaged with you. You know that there's someone who's interested in what it is that you have to offer. And you just want to make sure that you're not going to clutter up your design with it and that users are still able to achieve their primary activity without getting confused by your promotional pattern. Landing pages are there to promote your services. So um, you can go big here, make it as large as you want, but just keep in mind that the user first needs to be convinced about the value of what you do. So that's probably the first thing you want to focus on in the landing page and install secondarily. Feed patterns are quite, are quite common, both on the web and in native apps. Um, so you could use feed cards to promote the installability of your web app. But please don't show this promotion too often. That will annoy your users. And if a user does dismiss the card, remember that and don't show the card again. Every app use case is a little bit different. So you'll know what an appropriate moment is in your app. But there's always some key moment in a user journey where the user has given a signal that they're engaged, and you're not interrupting them from some other, you know, the key activity that you want them to accomplish. So in this example, we're showing a promotional pattern when a game is over. And you want to choose something that's contextually relevant to encourage the user to install. So uh, for example, saying that uh, it will be easier for the user to come back and play again is a great way to promote in this particular case. So these are some good general principles for promoting web apps. The first one is please don't be annoying. Um, your users came to your site to get something done. Make that their the top priority of your UI. And if they're not having a good time, if they're not enjoying your experience, they're just going to leave. So there's really no point in hassling them about install. Second, if the user isn't really benefiting, don't promote it. And finally, do use context to help the user understanding to understand what it is they're going to get out of installing your web app. So investing in a great PWA and making that PWA installable does have great business benefits. So I'd like to share a case study with you. A little bit of background on OYO. This is the second largest hotel chain in the world, presence in more than 80 countries and 23,000 hotels. And OYO has seen installability in the mobile web as a key opportunity to scale their demand, ch a demand channel. Mobile web growth by OYO was facilitated by three important steps. Um, the first was the rollout of a PWA um, over and above uh, an initial M site, a, a basic mobile website. Then they rolled out uh, install from Chrome. And finally, uh, install from Play via Trusted Web Activity. So I'll give you a little bit more detail on each of these. Um, at, each of the, at each step here, they were able to see not just a lift in conversion rate, but in pretty much every other key metric that they were interested in, including performance. Once they moved to install from browser, they were doubling what it was that they were seeing already from uh, just from the PWA rollout. And this was their first foray into having an app-like experience. And finally, they launched and play using a trusted web activity. And the numbers 
there were very strong. And part of the reason for this is that you're capturing a segment of users who already have a very strong intent to engage with your brand. Chances are that if they found you in play, they found you by name. They already searched for your keyword and for your name as a keyword, and they are interested in doing business with you. So as you can see, Oyo was able to achieve actually a conversion rate that was quite equivalent to their native app with the light offering. And the light offering differentiates itself by being smaller, uh, being a, a much smaller footprint at just 900 kilobytes by comparison to the native app with a very similar rating in the Play Store. Thanks so much for joining today, everyone. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the afternoon.